In talking about uh, uh, management under uncertainty or risk management, or risk, I, I'm trying to think that all of us should uh, try to change the focus of our thinking to let's focus on uncertainty first and then think about return second. Because if we focus on uncertainty first, I think we will develop many new ideas and rich ways of attacking problems. And I think in my years of being involved with uh, banks and, and hedge funds and other financial institutions and that, really the uh, risk management area is just very, very underdeveloped, even though uh, risk management uh, or uncertainty should be part and parcel of the same coin as return, but it isn't. You know, it is not at all. And the um, areas that I think need a tremendous amount of development or research development um, are, um, are uh, embryonic at this juncture and that will in the future, we'll see a huge evolution of risk management systems. Risk management um, and uh, uncertainty at uh, financial organizations themselves was, is really more of a control or regulatory requirement uh, and not really part of business decision making. But with the crisis that's occurred, my belief is that it'll be keep moving up and become part and parcel of the of the same world. I mean, I was asked, for example, by um, the Swiss Central Bank, head of Swiss Central Bank, to look at UBS's risk management system and risk management reports uh, that were presented to the board of directors of UBS, and. Um, I couldn't understand it. I mean, it was done in a way that was, uh, reports were pr pr produced, but they weren't illuminating. They weren't done in a way that would be usable uh, by the board of directors to understand the risks of the firm. If I told you uh, on the board, I'm the CEO of an organization, and I told you that I was going to increase the profits of the firm by 30% uh, in the next year, and I was going to um, increase uh, sales by 25%, cut uh, advertising budget by 30%, and uh, invest in R&D projects increased by 20%, that all the board of directors, and you would say, how are you gonna do that? That's impossible, okay? But yet, to that same board, They'd have hundreds of questions about the policies and the activities, but if you ask the board, you then tell the board, the value at risk, uh, the VAR, is 100 million, there'd be no questions. You know, so you'd go on to some other topic. So that shows these contrasts in terms of our thinking in terms of generation of returns uh, versus risk and, how, and, and what it implies for the firm, and risk is a tough, tough problem, but you know, we have the areas that I've thought about and have done a lot of thinking about and, I th and uh, in terms of sort of a framework of thinking, um, I have a taxonomy and obviously every taxonomy fails, so if you think of a, another item to add to my taxonomy, add to my, uh, my taxonomy, that'll be terrific. But I think that we need a lot of work in development, and I'll come back to some of these uh, as I finish the list. But one is capital allocation. How do we allocate capital to strategies or to a business or a line? Um, you know, what, how, what capital do we allocate uh, to it? Because um, it, it has a huge effect. If we allocate too little capital to a strategy, then the return on capital will look very high, but we have insufficient capital. If we allocate too much capital to a strategy, the return on capital obviously will look low. And um, you know, in a, in a simple illustration of this, which I'll return to, that um, it's the good news, bad news problem. My venture capital projects 
they say Myron will need five million dollars, not me personally, but, um, uh, but in group of us, we need five million dollars for the project. And then six months later, they call us up and they say, we have some good news for you, but we have some bad news. I said, well, what's the good news? Well, the good news is we've invested the money, everything looks great. You know, we're just in the cusp. It's always the option problem, you know, the, or the trembling hand where you have the exercise. We just need more time and more money. Why? Because it looks terrific, but we ran out of money. Okay, so when you think about that is a common thing, that's the bad news. So the question is, you know, how do you uh, allocate capital and just think about how to allocate capital, and I'll come back to that. The second issue in risk management is obviously capital structure, and when I mean capital structure, I always think about that in terms of how much operating and financial flexibility should be built into the firm's plans. Operating flexibility and financing flexibility. Because there's no textbook to say how much optionality one should build into the firm's financing or operating policies. Many firms, can get if they, you know, it's, it's just-in-time management. You know, we talked about the old just-in-time management. As long as you know exactly the path that can be taken, then obviously the lowest cost solution is to take that path. The more uncertain you are though, the more flexibility you need or the more optionality you need in decision making. But that's a business decision. So how do you teach that or even do, re and do research on the flexibility question or the operating and financing flexibility, which is uh, the capital structure question and then the form of financing. And, and risk management or managing under uncertainty is not risk minimization. Because to minimize risk, you can't make returns. And all the tools we learned about risk management, when I first started in the profession, risk management was uh, cash versus risky projects. You know, so it's the reserves. The more money you had in cash, then obviously the more money uh, reserves you had, the more flexibility you had. More cash you have, you know, the more flexibility you have. So that was, that was one model. But the trouble is the more cash you have, you're not making any money, you know. So you have the most flexibility, the most optionality, but yet at the same time you're not making money. So having, saying it's cash versus uh, risky projects or risky assets uh, as part of, is an optimization question is why or how much cash to have. Uh, how much flexibility to build into your cash activities. The second tool of risk management is diversification. So you broadly diversify. We try to diversify across activities in um, entities, but the problem is that a business doesn't make money by diversifying. Obviously we know if, if we diversified completely we would make no money because uh, we just make the market return or we make the average return and no one would pay us or should pay us any money to diversify. Um, you know, that's index funds or other types of projects are, are very low cost alternatives. So a firm has to concentrate to make money and then that's an optimization decision. And the third uh, area of risk management is uh, optionality or options which you know, I got into and was fascinated about early in, in my career is how do you price options, you know? But the funny part about options in terms of risk management, you can buy a put option to protect yourself against the downside of your firm's activities or your investment company's activities, but the problem is that it's a, it's a fascinating contract. If you buy an option, then you don't, you can either know the price of the protection, but you don't know uh, the level of protection, or vice versa. You can get all the protection you want, but you won't know the price. Why? Because the way the world evolves, okay, that say you buy a protection today, 10% uh, 10, 10 out of the money put option to protect your downside, and then it's the case that the um, value of the underlying asset increases tomorrow, then so it's now far above 
uh, your strike price, then the value of your protection is very low. So you have to make a new decision to buy more protection. And that's what makes the problem of, um, of uh, you know, the optimization problem interesting because to make money, we can't just keep cash. To uh, make money, we can't diversify. And to make money, we have to be able to, if we want to use options to protect ourselves, we have to know in advance what the states of nature are in which we're going to want to insure ourselves against downside losses.